Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of studying your word. Once again, we ask you by your spirit, through your son, to reveal yourself to us and help us to be obedient to your will. We ask and pray this and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at our series, Bodybuilding, Strengthening the Body of Christ, looking at all of the one another verses, and we come to another one today. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. The verse says, Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. The portion that we're going to concern ourselves with today is this, having compassion one of another. The only time that Greek phrase is used in the New Testament, but the idea of compassion is throughout the Bible. As a matter of fact, turn with me to Psalm 78. I would like to look at five verses in the book of Psalms that deal and describe God's compassion. In Psalm 78, the psalmist is dealing with God's interaction with Israel, their backsliding, their hard-heartedness. and He says this in verse 38, But he, speaking of the Lord, being full of compassion, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. He was full of compassion. Of compassion. Look at Psalm 86, verse 15. The psalmist David says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion, and gracious, long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. In Psalm 111, verse 4. The psalmist says, He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The very next psalm, Psalm 112, verse 4 again. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Psalm 145, the last psalm we'll look at here. Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Have compassion one for another. The Lord is full of compassion. Oftentimes in the New Testament, we're told that Jesus was moved with compassion.
The leper comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, if you are willing, thou canst make me clean. We're told that Jesus was once again moved with compassion. He touched him and said, I am willing, be thou clean. When Jesus and the disciples made it to shore, and they were confronted with legion. After Jesus cast the demons from him and he was there clothed and in his right mind, he said, Lord, I want to go with you. I want to be with you. And Jesus told him, I want you to go home and tell your family and your friends what great things God has done for you and that he has had compassion upon you. When Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son, we're told that the son decides to come home and when he was a great way off on the road, the father saw him and he was moved with compassion. He ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. Another one of my favorite passages of Scripture is found in John chapter 11, verse 35. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. I find it interesting that he's there weeping because he intentionally waited four days to respond to the call of Lazarus' sisters when he was sick. He gets there, and according to them, he's too late. Lazarus is dead. He's been buried. Jesus is standing there in the midst of the crowd, and we're told that he weeps. Now, we know he's not weeping for sorrow over Lazarus because he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. We know he's not weeping for sorrow of his own because he knows that he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. I believe that he's there weeping because there are those around him who are weeping and he's being moved with compassion. As a matter of fact, the writer of Hebrews, if you would turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4, we're given an amazing truth about our Lord, one that has comforted my soul on many, many occasions. It's Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, we come boldly to the throne because we have a high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Now, a lot of times people would have you say, well, feelings, forget feelings. God's not interested in your feelings. He's not coming to your pity party. My Bible tells me differently. He can be touched with my feelings. He's able to relate to me, and he does in a powerful way. We're told, have compassion one to another. It, it means to suffer or feel along with someone else, to, to be considerate of their feelings. It does mean to be able to relate, to, to sympathize, to, to care, to have concern. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're to do this very thing. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we're told that there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. We ought to be able to relate to one another because we're suffering the same things. We're feeling the same things. We're struggling with the same sins. We're to have compassion one to another. In Romans chapter 12, verse 15, we're told this, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, We're told this, 
And whether one member suffer, speaking of the body of Christ, we're members one of another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. We're to have compassion one of another. I want to close out our study by reading a very familiar passage of Scripture, but it's, it's a good reminder in and what we're discussing is found right there in the Scripture. It's in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse 25. It says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempting him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he saith unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. And he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, and which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But, here's, here's our, our word, our phrase. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, or had compassion on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Have compassion one of another. Our text, 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that you are there to call that you should inherit a blessing. Have compassion one of another. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are full of compassion. Lord, we thank you that you're a high priest which can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We ask you to let your very nature be formed in us by the power of your Spirit according to your word. Help us to have compassion one of another. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.